Yeah, mate, 40 here. So in Steve Saylor's latest column, he was talking about what do the Republicans have to do to combine the two key elements of their coalition, the working class and the managerial class. Like what are possible policies that can appeal to both the working class and the managerial class? So traditionally the Republican base was the country club set, the managerial class. But now Republicans are increasingly down market, they're increasingly populist, increasingly the party of the working class. How can they regain the managerial class? So I think the, the Republicans' number one vote winning issue is crime. So anything they can do uh, to emphasize their crime fighting program, so locking up super predators, right? laws like three strikes and you're out, uh, tough law and order, and making the streets safer, locking away bad guys. Right? That seems like a pretty good program for Republicans. You would think would apply an appeal to both the managerial class and the working class. Because the managerial class needs assurance that there will be safety to invest and to plan, to program things and to accomplish great things, right? You need safety. Working class is more vulnerable than the managerial class and they're more likely to live near super predators. So I think a tough law and order platform is likely to be quite appealing to both the managerial class and the working class. Anything you can do to reduce crime rates, that should appeal to both classes. Uh, reducing immigration should particularly appeal to the working class, but to the extent that it's part of a law and order platform, that also should appeal to the managerial class. Uh, the managerial class wants, wants assurance that uh, you can have law and order, that you can, you can plan for the world ahead. Right? And so if you tie in the immigration controls as part of making you know, the world ahead more knowable so that you can you know, plan more, more rationally that should appeal to both the managerial class and the working class. Then being anti-work culture, I would think would appeal to both the managerial class and the, the working class. It would be much more appealing to the workers. But if you can roll back all that extreme civil rights legislation or simply roll back enforcement of it, reduce its prestige, you know, reduce incentives to you know, engage in lawfare, Re reduce the power of civil rights legislation to disrupt businesses, disrupt communities, disrupt individual lives. I think that could be a powerful winner for both the managerial class and the working class. And then trade restriction. All right, that should appeal to the working class, reshoring jobs, bringing jobs back home, manufacturing more in the United States. That should be appealing to the working class. And that also creates jobs for the managerial class, creates opportunity to you know, profit from trade restriction. So the, the finance class, right, the Wall Street class, probably won't appreciate trade restriction as much as the working class and the managerial class. But uh, Wall Street overwhelmingly votes for the Democrats. Then non-interventionist foreign policy, like fewer stupid wars, of, wars abroad, that could appeal to both the working class who would traditionally fight such wars and a managerial class who wants safety, doesn't want the economy upended, 
by all these you know, crazy crusades overseas to remake other nations, engage in nation building. So a sober foreign policy like what uh, Donald Trump engaged in, he didn't start any new wars, he dialed back intervention overseas. And I think that should be a winner for both the working class and the managerial class. Any move towards a less litigious society, so less money going to lawyers, you know, less prestige going to litigation, you know, fewer incentives to engage in litigation, anything that uh, Republican administration could do to reduce the incentives to file lawsuits that would that could appeal to both the managerial class and the working class be more selective with how you subsidize education right so not not paying off people's student loans being more selective in the funding of education, right, making it more socially acceptable for people to go from high school right into work, reducing the need for you know, everyone to go to college. Right, that, that should be appealing to both the, the working class and the managerial class. And then you're, you're defunding the, the, the radical left which is launching many of its attacks on traditional society from the academy. So there may be less subsidizing of these radical left-wing attacks from the academy onto traditional American values and American society. That could be a winner for both the working class and the managerial class. Uh, some thoughtful deregulation to encourage entrepreneurship, to encourage you know, new, the formation of new businesses, the expansion of businesses, All right? So if it's intelligently done, thoughtfully done, that could appeal to both the working class and the managerial class. But sometimes that might mean tax cuts are just uh, this onerous regulation that is doing more harm than good. Uh, building infrastructure, improving America's infrastructure, that should get support from both our managerial class and our working class. and a, a more nationalist America, a nationalist foreign policy, a more self-interested foreign policy, you know, less idealistic foreign policy, less about nation building and making the world safe for democracy and more about America first. That should appeal to both the working class and the managerial class. But uh, Trumpism, be effective can't just be a reaction, can't just be a populist reaction. It needs institutions, intellectual institutions, think tanks to push it forward.